while ago, I was driving down the road, and I got this sudden craving for a Big Mac. Now, McDonald's isn't my favorite. You know, their fries are pretty good now and then, but I just had that craving for a Big Mac. And while I was driving, my mind was wandering, thinking about different things, places I had to go. But suddenly that idea of a Big Mac popped in my mind. Now, I think where that came from was a billboard that I had passed with a big picture of the Big Mac fries, cold drink up there, bigger than life, looking just great. And although I didn't really pay attention to the sign when I went by, part of my brain saw that and registered that that looked good. And probably I was a little bit hungry and made me think that McDonald's was the place I wanted to go. Yes, we're talking about that really important, powerful part of our brain called the subconscious. Now, subconscious is something we can learn to control and use to our advantage. In Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich, the third step to riches is auto-suggestion. She calls the medium for influence, influencing the subconscious mind. So the subconscious mind is going to tell us things, encourage us to do things, teach us that things can or can't be done. And it's going to continue to do that based on the information that's given to it. Now, we can either give it information ourselves, or we can take information from things around us. I took information from that McDonald's billboard. Without thinking about it, I thought McDonald's would taste good right now. Well, they may or may not have. But that's less important than the fact is that my brain told me it would be good. If we're not going to take control of our own subconscious and teach our subconscious the things we want it to help us with, we're going to be at the mercy of the influences around us. We're going to look at magazines that teach us that we should be beautiful and stylish. We're going to watch TV shows or movies that teach us that people should be beautiful, that we're not living up to the image portrayed that we should have, that we should think everyone should have. If we're not taking the time to consciously teach our subconscious, now, on the worst side of that, we see throughout history propaganda, where governments or organizations, maybe even advertising today, teaches us over and over again through subtle or sometimes not so subtle messages what our mind is supposed to think. And our mind will automatically begin to think those things. For decades, people thought smoking a cigarette looked cool, looked sophisticated made you macho or sexy. As things have turned around and we see the anti-smoking campaigns and the health campaigns and talking about it, when I was a teenager, I probably did think that smoking made you look cool. Now I see someone smoking, and no offense to anyone out there who does smoke, but you should quit. Um, it, I immediately think you look pretty dumb if you're smoking. My subconscious has taught me that because of what I've seen what I've been influenced by consciously and unconsciously through the media and advertisements and knowledge I've gained. Now, George Orwell, in his incredible book, 1984, talked about the ministry of truth. And the ministry of truth had three things written on it. Peace is war. Freedom is slavery. Ignorance is strength. Now, those are the examples they use what they call doublespeak or things which contradict themselves. But if you look into those, you can justify what each of those mean. War is peace. Well, sometimes you need to fight a war to maintain peace, to gain peace, to stop a greater evil. Um, but World War II would be an example um, to stop the atrocities that were being committed by the Nazi German and the Imperial Japanese specifically required people to sacrifice and go to war to create a peace. There's a reason behind that. In George Orwell's Ministry of Truth, that was not so much the reason as it was to brainwash the people that these things were true. Throughout 1984, Orwell talks about this doublespeak and this really brainwashing is kind of the term that he uses. 
that the government continually teaches, preaches, encourages, and enforces a certain way of thinking. And by doing that enough, we begin to think that. We begin to believe the things that we're being told. We stop questioning some of those things. Now, that, of course, is bad. That's evil. That's terrible. We need to be aware of what's going on. We need to be able to stop that kind of double think in our own brains. Um, and as we're coming up on election year, I encourage all of you to do that as well with our own political parties if you're in the United States or whichever country you happen to be in, to consciously think about these things. Don't allow your subconscious to absorb this information, these ideologies, these thoughts, and just accept them as truth no matter what. Now, the flip side of that is the same as you can teach your subconscious not to accept the bad things. You can teach your subconscious to accept the good things. You can use it to build the appropriate habits. Now, habits are wonderful because once you develop a good habit, you don't need to think about it anymore. You don't need to, say, make your bed. If you get in the habit of making your bed every day, you don't have to stop and think, do I need to make my bed? You just do it. And life is easier, and I'm lazy, and I like an easy life whenever I can get it. I get in the habit of driving someplace, and my subconscious mind tells me that I am going to my office. And I get to my office, and I pull in the parking lot, and I stop and say, I was going to the grocery store. Why am I at my office? Um, I don't know if you've done that as well. Your subconscious teaches you those things, unless you take control of it. So... The big question here is, how do you take control of your subconscious? Well, Napoleon Hill teaches us in Think and Grow Rich the power of auto-suggestion. The same as if someone tells us, you are beautiful every day, we'll think that we're beautiful. As a child, I should say as an infant, when I was born, I was in a loving family. They called me Ian, and I accepted that that's what my name was. I accepted that only because I was told it over and over again, so I believed it. And I began to have a strong belief and a knowledge that that's what it was because it was taught to me over and over and over again. Now, if we want to have positive habits, Think and Go Rich talks about growing rich, how to get money. Now, of course, money, first of all, is not important in and of itself. Money is simply there to help to give opportunities, to give choices. But it does give those choices. It allows us to have freedoms. So if we want to gain that freedom, we want to gain that money, we need to teach ourselves that we can do it. An auto-suggestion by saying it over and over again, repeating daily affirmations, writing down goals and repeating them several times a day, teaches our mind that this is what is correct and true. And we can teach our subconscious through this auto-suggestion to believe these things, to take away some of those doubts that we have. Now, the difference between propaganda and auto-suggestion, propaganda is an evil created by someone else to make you do what they want you to do. Auto-suggestion is you teaching yourself what you want to do, what you can do, what you can achieve, and then giving you the tools you need to go out and achieve it. And those tools start with your belief that it can be done. So I encourage you to pick up a copy of Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Read through auto-suggestion. And at the very end of that chapter, he says, read through this chapter every day until you believe it. Create that auto-suggestion in your mind.